Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. In this episode we'll be looking at some lights that I bought from eBay that hopefully I will be connecting up to my uh, WLED boards and be able to control via Node Red and WLED. And here we have the LEDs, it's supposed to be 200 lights and obviously there's a infrared remote control with all different patterns on it but we're not going to be using that and it's powered by USB and there's a little receiver of some variety in there but we'll pull that apart and have a look now we have the 200 LEDs uh, should be addressable LEDs let's power it up using a power bank all coming on let's have a look at some of the different patterns all different colors you can select and different patterns Yep, yeah, all the patterns look nice. Let's take a closer look at one of the LEDs. Looks like it's enclosed in a little epoxy blob connected via three single strand wires. Which is fine as long as you don't move them that often. I do like these type of lights because they seem to disperse the light a little bit more of a omnidirectional and here's the USB I won't be using this so let's take it apart as inside you can see an infrared receiver it's a crystal and two ICs with of course the markings removed I know from previous ones of these the one next to the infrared receiver will be an infrared decoder chip and the other one will be a microprocessor of some variety due to the crystal that holds all the programmings and you can see we have three wires plus minus and data now these lights are a little bit strange because the data is on the outside line not the middle line as you would find on WS2812s but anyway we don't need that but what we're going to do is connect it up to one of my circuit boards that holds the WeMOS D1, which is programmed with WLED. So let's connect it up. Making sure we wire it up correctly. Yep, all the wiring looks good. So I'll pair up with the WLED app, connect onto it. As you can see with WLED, there's lots of different effects and colours. Plus, it's also MQTT controllable, which means you can program it from Node Red. So we'll switch it on, and it's set from the previous settings of the board. So we'll go to LED preferences, change the amount of LEDs to the 200 it's supposed to have. We'll save that and there's the next, next segment of LEDs coming on. Now I don't know what's happening here but there's something strange going on with the first set of LEDs that didn't happen when it was connected to the USB one. 
like the first 20 odd LEDs seem to be doing something something of their own I can't quite I can't can't quite put my finger on why this is happening I mean, my board is using the correct um, level shifting and it never has any trouble with any other LEDs it just seems to be this LED strip maybe the signals too big on the first ones or as you can see if you put it on a solid color something strange is going on with the first set of LEDs but anyway we can we can solve that problem so I've just connected up another set of LEDs that I had that was just a hundred and as you can see they're working perfectly so that's fine so it must be either we've got one of those LEDs is faulty and it's not relaying information or the inf uh, the, uh, the data's getting changed somehow or I don't know So yeah, definitely looks like the first 20 odd LEDs, there's something wrong with them. Because every time you select a colour, they, they flicker in and change in, along, along with the data that's being transmitted. So they must be interpreting the data a little bit wrong. I can't quite put my finger on what's going on. So, it only leaves, we can modify them. So what I've done here is I've cut off the LEDs that were causing the issues basically a cut off to the one after it just in case it was that LED that was causing the problem and everything still seems to be working correctly so even if I've lost 20 LEDs it doesn't matter I think 180 LEDs is more than enough for what I wanted to use it for Now let's turn back on the other LEDs. So back into configuration, LED properties. Now let's see if we can count how many LEDs we've got. 160 and there's still some still some not lit. So we'll put in 170. And there's still some not lit. I'm certainly not counting each LED individually. So we'll look for 180. And there's still some not lit. Unless this is a strange occurrence with the, LED, uh, the WLED software, I'm not sure. Anyway, 190, and it's still some not lit. So we'll type in 200. And now they're all lit. So, again, not sure what's going on there, but the software thinks it's got 200 LEDs on it, which is good for me. So let's have a look at the few things that WLED can do. Obviously this is all controllable, controllable by a node red and MQTT.
which means you could integrate it into um, the Alexa and Home Assistant and what have you if you have the correct flows in Node Red. So we'll do is we'll just go back to that again, put 119 again, turn it on, and sure enough, the last LEDs are not lit. So either they're giving me more LEDs on the string or something isn't addressing quite correctly, I'm not too sure. I've never had any problems with the WLED software counting the amount of LEDs on any of the other LED strips that I have. And there you can see the last section of the LEDs are not lit. And I think there's about 10 LEDs there. So unless the LED string was more than 200 LEDs, maybe WLED can't control more than 200 in one string, I don't know, I'll have to double check that with the uh, writer of the software. But now everything seems to be working correctly. And they weren't um, that dear off eBay. I think it was about 12, 14 pounds for a 200 string LED, which is not that bad. I'm not sure what the actual type of LED that's in there, but they seem to be controllable, controllable by the WS2812 uh, setting in WLED. I'll look through, through a few more of the settings, a few more of the patterns that are in there. As you can see, there's lots of patterns. And the good thing is with this software, you can actually put these LEDs into segments. So you could have one segment of the LEDs running one uh, pattern and another segment running another pattern. If you want to switch off the first 10 LEDs, you can do. Want to switch off the last set of LEDs you can do. All in all, for uh, controlling addressable LEDs, this software is amazing. And because it fits on a, a Wemos D1, it's very cost effective. And Wi-Fi controllable, MQTT controllable, which means Node Red controllable. But as you can see there, I've rewired it, put some proper cables on the end of the LED uh, string that I cut to make it conform to the wiring that I have for my LED controllers, which can be seen in previous videos. And all the colours are working correctly. If you ever plug LEDs into this and the blue and the red are back to front, there's a setting to switch it around. All in all, this software is absolutely fantastic for controlling this type of LED. And when you have these LEDs actually on a large Christmas tree from the bottom coiling around the tree all the way to the top, the effects are very good. What I like to do is I like to have them in a sequence controlled via node red so they change different sequences throughout the evening. And if you want to change it manually, you just dial into the 
uh, the WLED software, WLED software straight uh, directly and change it manually. As you can see, some quite good patterns on there. I don't think the camera shows how good it is, but you get a good idea. So all in all, apart from the 20 LEDs at the start that were acting a little bit strange, I'm not too worried about that. Everything else seems to be working quite nicely. So all in all, very happy with that. Anyway, thank you for watching this episode of Microchips. And we'll see you in the next episode.